Hello again, Gary Stearman. Time for another Prophecy in the News daily update. It's Monday, June 4th. We're going to talk about Syria and the extremely complex events that are taking place there right now. These events involve the Muslim Brotherhood. Of course, they involve Israel. And as we're going to see very shortly, they involve Vladimir Putin of Russia, who is uh, being very vocal about what's going on in Syria. By the way, Russia is Syria's chief provider of weaponry. Keep that in mind. This from Debka File, uh, talking about a Syrian air base in southern Syria, not far from the Sea of Galilee, across the Golan Heights. As Syria's ruler Bashar Assad stood before Damascus uh, Parliament Sunday, June 3rd, declaring, quote, not even a, not even monsters could have carried out the Hula massacre, end quote. Rebels attacked a Syrian Air Force base east of the southern town of Dara'a, opposite the Israeli Golan border. Their first such attack in the 14-month uprising in Syria. And so, ironically enough, uh, the great peacemaker, and I'm being a little bit facetious there, Bashar al-Assad stood up in parliament decrying the Hula massacre when most people believe that, that, that his own troops are carrying out these massacres uh, in, in homes and in, in, in other cities, uh, particularly in western Syria. He's, but he's denying this. Meanwhile, the rebels are out setting fire to his air bases. <clears throat> uh, the air base they attacked According to Debka File, is Syria's southernmost air facility. It's positioned to be available for backing up Syrian units posted on the Golan border. Opposite Israeli forces, the 5th, 7th, and 10th divisions of the Syrian army would be backed up by the air force operating out of this air base, which is no longer there, So, which will certainly change uh, Syria's military plans. No information was immediately available about the numbers or types of aircraft destroyed, and the Syrian state media have not disclosed the incident in the world press. So uh, little is known, but, but the smoke and flames were seen to be rising, and the word is that uh, uh, rebels have destroyed one, uh, in fact, a key Syrian air base in uh, southern uh, Syria. Uh, in northern Syria, the rebels have begun to fashion armed personnel carriers with surface-to-air missiles and heavy caliber machine guns capable uh, of wiping out large numbers of ground troops and low-flying Syrian assault aircraft and helicopters. So the, uh, the rebels are becoming more and more armed as time goes by. Meanwhile, Vladimir Putin uh, in Germany uh, is making very large noises. Remember, Vladimir Putin, the Russians, are the chief suppliers of arms and other war materiel to Bashar al-Assad. And so there's a very tight link between uh, Assad and Vladimir Putin. And I'm quoting here from Agence France Presse, Russian President Vladimir Putin warned, this is last Friday now, of a, quote, extremely dangerous situation in Syria and emerging signs of a civil war, but rejected a military intervention as he met with European leaders. Amid mounting pressure uh, for Moscow to drop its resistance to tougher UN action on Syria, uh, Putin is meeting with German Chancellor Angela Merkel. Uh, he had arrived in Paris for talks also with France's new uh, leftist president, actually I should say communist president, uh, who happens to be named Francois Hollande. Now, uh, we have shifting developments in Europe, uh, allowing Vladimir Putin to come to more and more uh, of a position of world power uh, right at the time when his influence in Syria is most important. Uh, Putin said, quote, as far as arms supplies are concerned, Russia does not supply the weapons that could be used in a civil conflict. He lied. What can I say? <clears throat> it's been well known for years that Russia is the chief supplier of arms to Syria, but Putin um, committed a bald-faced perjury here by saying, no, 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 we don't give weapons to the Syrians that could be used in a civil conflict. In other words, our weapons did not mow down uh, civilians in the streets of Syria. 
He says, as far as arms supplies are concerned, Russia does not supply those kinds of weapons. And the interesting thing that's developing here, and this is the most interesting thing of all in this conflict, is that Turkey has now done a complete about-face and dropped its support for the Syrian rebels. Two radical developments arising from the Syrian conflict are revealed here. In an astonishing about-face, writes Deb Kefile, Syria has turned away from its 14-month support for the anti-Assad revolt alongside the West and made common cause with Russia. In other words, with Bashar Assad. So to make this very simple, we now have Turkey, Russia, and President Bashar al-Assad of Syria tightly aligned. They are no longer uh, moving against each other, moving independently. They have now locked together as one force. Get that again. That's Russia, Syria, and Turkey have locked together. And by the way, along with Iran and Syria, and this gives us the exact military lineup as mentioned in Ezekiel 38. I, and it's, it's an absolutely amazing. This particular news release came out June the 2nd, a couple of days ago, as I uh, do this report. <clears throat> the Shiite Muslims, on the other hand, who are dead set against, uh, that is many factions of them are dead set against Bashar al-Assad, now find themselves wondering who their leader is. Uh, the Lebanese Shiite group has uh, kept its most advanced hardware stashed at the Syrian Al-Ham and Al-Zabadani uh, military bases near Damascus. And by the way, they are said to have up to 40,000 rockets that could be fired on Israel. This is truly amazing. Uh, skipping sort of to the end of this report from Deb Kefile, Washington, London, and Paris began rushing forward contingency plans for the eventuality of a broad uh, resistance force, which would be Ankara, Turkey, Moscow, Russia, and Damascus, Syria, uh, consolidating their forces against the rebels and leaving the United States wondering just who to back and where to step in and what to do. So we have an amazing set of events that have, have essentially unfolded in the, about the last 48 hours in, in Turkey. Uh, the important thing to remember is that Moscow, Ankara, and Damascus are now in league, and they are pushing against the Muslim Brotherhood and supporting Iran, biblical Persia. <clears throat> concerning Damascus, Jeremiah 49.23, concerning Damascus, Hamath is confounded and Arpad, for they have heard evil tidings and they are faint-hearted. There is sorrow on the sea, it cannot be quieted. Damascus is waxed feeble, and turneth herself to flee, and fear hath seized upon her. Anguish and sorrows have taken her as a woman in travail. How is the city of praise not left, the city of my joy? Therefore her young men shall fall in her streets, and all the men of war shall be cut off in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will kindle a fire in the wall of Damascus, and it shall consume the palaces of Ben-Hadad, which is Jeremiah's view of the destruction of Damascus. Uh, everything is moving toward this event that is prophesied uh, in two very prominent places in the Bible, and perhaps in a third, which we'll be discussing in days to come. Keep watching the news. There are some ama amazing events unfolding in the Middle East right now. Remember, keep looking up. <laughs>